My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit, as we go into your word, the Holy Bible, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. Why did Satan fight Michael for Moses' body? Today, we're going to answer that question because that's a question that a lot of people would like to know the answer to. Well, first of all, let's start with where it says that in the Bible. Let's go to the little book of Jude. And there in Jude, in the ninth verse, we read, yet Michael the archangel when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. So Satan, the devil, was trying to get the body of Moses for some reason. Anyway, it says, Durst not bring against him a rallying accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked you. So Michael didn't get into this discussion with him. He told him, the Lord rebuked you. You cannot have Moses' body. No. So, in order to find out why Satan the devil wanted Moses' body, we have to learn about Moses. What kind of prophet was Moses? The Bible tells us in Numbers chapter 12, that Moses' older brother, Aaron, who was the high priest, and his sister, Miriam, had a problem with the authority God had given to Moses. And they were criticizing him for marrying a non-Israelite. He had married an Ethiopian woman. Now, you have a lot of people who teach that Moses in the Children of Israel were Caucasians, but nothing could be further from the truth. The Bible is black people's history. True students of the Word of God know this. I have a Bible study titled, The Bible is Black People's History, Part 1 and 2. So if you don't know these things already, you need to study with me on that particular subject. I also have a Bible study titled, Was Jesus Christ Black or White? Where I go into the scriptures, proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that Christ was a black man when he came to this world. And so were his people Israel. I also have a Bible study titled, Who Were the Real Jews? Where I prove the same thing. So anyway, Moses was not a Caucasian. He was a black Hebrew. And he had married an Ethiopian woman, which was another black woman. But their issue was she was not an Israelite. Anyway, they were totally out of line for speaking against God's prophet. They had no idea the type of relationship the Lord had with Moses. And one of the reasons why was Moses in his old age had become the type of servant that the Lord wants us all to be. When Moses was a young man, he was not the type of man he became when he got well in his 80s. I believe he was 80 years old when God called him into service. 
Numbers chapter 12, verse 3 says, Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. So he had become the most humble person on the planet at that time. And God loves people who understand that they need him for everything and they reverence him as the creator of heaven and earth by being humble. So that was one of the characteristics that God loved about Moses. But anyway, he said to Aaron and Miriam in verse 6, and he said, Hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, when you see the word Lord in caps in the King James Version, his name Jehovah should have been there. I, Je Jehovah, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. He said, this is the way I dealt with prophets. I'll make myself known to that person in a vision and speak to them in a dream. But in verse 7 and 8, he says, My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. So Moses was also a very obedient servant of God. That's why God loved him so much. Then he says, in verse 8, With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord, the very image of the Lord shall he behold. So Moses was quite a humble and faithful servant in God's eyes, and he loved him that much. So that's why Satan felt if he could get his body, he could really do some damage with it. When Christ transfigured something very very interesting happened. In Luke chapter 9, verse 29 and 31, the Bible tells us, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment, which is his clothing, was white and glistening. So this is the transfiguration when Christ took three of his disciples and transformed into his spiritual body in their presence. But look, verse 30 says, and behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, which is Elijah. 31 says, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. So we see the two greatest prophets in the scriptures appearing in their glorified form and talking to Christ about how he has to accomplish what he came to earth to do. Moses was one of those men, Elijah was the other. So Satan had knowledge of all these things because he was constantly watching um, the Messiah from the very moment he came into the world. But he knew from the study of the Old Testament how God loved Moses and how closer relationship he had and how he used Moses to do such a great work. Moses was used by God to write the 603 laws, decrees, and ordinances. The only thing Jehovah wrote himself was the Ten Commandments. Everything else Moses wrote. Okay? And in Exodus 33 we learn this is Moses talking to Jehovah. And he said, I beseech the show me thy glory. He says, I beg you, show me your glory. He wanted to see him. Verse 19, and he said, this is Jehovah talking to him, I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will proclaim the name of the Lord or the name of Jehovah before you and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he says in verse 20, and he said, you can't see my face for there shall no man see me and live. He said, Moses, you can't see me while you're in the flesh. But look what Jehovah did. Verse 21, and the Lord said, and Jehovah said, behold, there is a place by me and you will stand upon a rock. 22, and it shall come to pass 
while my glory passes by, that I will put you in a cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. 23. And I will take away my hand and you shall see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. So he loved him so much that he says, I can't let you see my face while you're in the flesh because it will kill you. But what I'm going to do is put you over here in the cleft of a rock. And when I walk by, I will remove my hand and you can see the back of me. And he allowed him to see him, see the back of him passing away because he loved him that much because he was such a humble and obedient servant. And then in Exodus 34, the Bible tells us in verse 29 and 30. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not, that means knew not, that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. Verse 30, and when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone or was shining, and they were afraid to come nigh or near him. So he didn't even know because the Lord let him see the back of his glorified body walking away that it caused his face to light up like a light bulb. <laughs> he came down to see Aaron and the children of Israel and they're like, oh my God, what's going on? And so the rest of that text said Moses would cover up with a veil so he wouldn't scare them. And then when he went into the tent to talk to Jehovah, he took it back off again. And eventually it stopped doing that. So Satan knew from reading the Old Testament or literally being there, spying what kind of relationship Jehovah had with Moses and how great of a man he was in Israel. So he said, if I could get hold to his body, I could do some real damage. And there's no doubt in my mind that if he would have been allowed to get Moses' body, he would have tried to deceive Jesus, even though he would not have succeeded because he came to Jesus to tempt him when God called him and sent him into ministry. He took him out in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights to be tested by the devil. So not only would he have tried to deceive Jesus and failed, he would have been able to deceive a lot of the children of Israel. So that's why he wanted his body. Well, people say, how do you know, men supported? Because the Bible clearly tells you what Satan is about. It's not rocket science. Revelation 12, 9 says of Satan, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth or deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So this is why Satan wanted the body of Moses so badly. Okay, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to tell you about an app that I learned about. It's been out for a while. I'm just not coming into the knowledge of it. The app is called WhatsApp. You can download it for free from the App Store. And the incredible thing about this app is you can call people anywhere over the world as long as they have the WhatsApp app and you use it for free. You can send videos, you can send text messages, and you can send pictures. So I encourage you guys to download WhatsApp. And that way you can communicate with yours truly anytime you want to and it won't cost you a penny. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free. Then you would use this code to send me your love gift. 
paypal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app. My code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelle. For Zelle, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, you can email me, Porter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section.